mathletes. What we're going to look at in this video is we're going to take another look at limits, but this time we're actually going to take a deeper look at limits and we're going to look at something known as one-sided limits. And we actually talked about a one-sided limit in the last video, but we didn't use that word. I'll show you what I mean. So really, a limit is made up of two parts, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. We call these the one-sided limits. And so what we're gonna use is these one-sided limits to closely analyze what a function is doing and whether it's continuous at that specific X value. Sounds a little tricky, right? But you're about to see it's actually not that bad. Let's start off the easy thing. Let's start off graphically. So I've got us a nice little graph here, f at x. And the question, the first question says down here, the limit as x approaches negative one, and you see that there, that little negative, that's not an exponent. That's a notation that negative says we're approaching negative one from the left. And the one beside it with the plus means we're approaching negative one from the right. So negative means left, positive means right. So as I approach negative one from the left, my y values are going towards zero. And as I approach negative one from the right, so this way, my y values are also approaching zero. Okay, so a one-sided limit is simply looking at something from the left and from the right. Now, what's f at negative one? Well, f at negative one is actually zero. So what do we have? We have the limit from the left equals the limit from the right equals the function at that point. What that tells us is the function is continuous. I can see the function's continuous because it's drawn for me. But algebraically, this is how we're going to determine if something is continuous. Yeah, let's try another one. Look at the next one. The limit as x approaches 2, and there's that negative, it means from the left. So as I come from the left, the y values are approaching 3. As I come from the right, the y values are approaching five. Now, what's f at two? f at two is that solid filled in point, right? That's five. Now, I can tell you just by looking at the graph, the visual that this is discontinuous. But algebraically, how do I know that? I know that because the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. If the limits don't equal each other, if they don't approach the same value, then we've got a problem. Our graph isn't coming to the same y value. It's discontinuous. Okay, so let's try another one. Here's one that you should have seen in 30-1, right? Looks like just a point of discontinuity at 2. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. So from the left, the y values are approaching 4. From the right, the y values are approaching four. That graph is clearly discontinuous. I see a hole, a point of discontinuity. And the reason algebraically that it's discontinuous is because the function does not exist at two, right? It does not exist. So again, if the limit exists, but the function doesn't exist at that point, then it's not continuous. Okay, another graph. The limit as x approaches zero from the left. So that's coming this way on this crazy looking graph. Now, I'm gonna say that that graph goes down to negative infinity. I need you to know something important here. Really the answer is the limit does not exist. But what I want you to write is both. It doesn't exist, but I, I wanna say it negative infinity because it gives me a sense of direction. Okay, that's really, really important. The limit doesn't exist, but by saying negative infinity, I have a sense of direction. Try it again. The limit as x approaches zero from the right. Same thing. 
it's going downwards to negative infinity forever. So the negative infinity, when I write that, is giving me a sense of direction. But what I need you to understand is that limit does not exist. Now, clearly this function is discontinuous because there's a vertical asymptote there. The other reason it doesn't exist is because the limits don't exist. They go to negative infinity and it does not exist at zero, okay? So we can't have a limit on a vertical asymptote because it's not going towards a real number. It's going to negative infinity. Now, the proper definition of continuity. A function is continuous at A if and only if the limit from the left equals the limit from the right equals the function at that point. A function is discontinuous if the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right, or if the limit from the left does equal the limit from the right, but it does not equal the function at that point. Okay, that's the proper definition, my friends. A nice and easy informal definition is simply if it's continuous, if it has no breaks or holes. So basically, if I can draw it without taking my pen off the page. That's continuous. It's discontinuous, or we have discontinuities if there's a hole in my graph or there's a vertical asymptote. Okay, simple as that. This is a definition that you certainly should know when you're dealing with calculus. Okay, now what if we don't have the graph? Well, if we don't have the graph, Think back to what we did in one-sided limits. We'll try to simply do substitution. So this one here says the limit as x approaches 2. So I'm just going to say, can I just do direct substitution? So I'm just going to sub it in. It's going to be 2 minus 2, which is 0. That's my limit. Now, if I think about what the graph of this looked like, you should know that the graph of this is just an absolute value that's been translated two units to the right. So if you think of it, as we approach two from the right, we're going towards a y value of zero. So even though it's a one-sided limit, we should always try direct substitution. Try it again for the next one. Zero from the right. The limit as x approaches zero from the right. So I get so close to zero, I sub in zero, and guess what I get? Zero. What does that look like visually? Well, this is a square root or a radical. It gives us half of a horizontal parabola. So as we approach zero from the right, we're going to get zero. Direct substitution is always our friend. Okay, what about sine x? Okay, a little trig, right? So again, I do direct substitution. As sine approaches zero, and we're in radians. Degrees are dead to us in calculus. We're always in radians. Well, as sine approaches zero, what do we get? Well, if we're thinking, here, let's even just draw the graph, because sometimes we forget what the graphs of these things look like, right? So remember, a sine graph starts at the origin, and it does that, and there's pi, and over here would be two pi, right? And it goes this way, and negative pi, and so on and so forth. So as x approaches zero, we get a y value of zero. And there it is. So with one-sided limits, always try direct substitution, okay? Now, actually, I wanna go back to b while I'm thinking about it. What if I changed the question to say this? The limit as x approaches zero from the left of the square root of x. Well, now that would actually be subbing in negative values into x. This would not exist. As you look at our graph below, we can't approach zero from the left because the graph does not exist. So you need to watch out for that as well when you're doing these questions. All right, one more thing we got to cover. 
look at this ugly thing. For g at x is equal to x minus one, if x is less than zero, and x squared, if x is greater than or equal to zero, determine the following limits if they exist, then sketch the graph of g. Okay, this is known as a piecewise function. We haven't played around with piecewise functions usually since 20-1. This is a piecewise function. So I wanna know if the limit exists. Where there's gonna be a problem is over here at zero, right? I can see there's something going on at zero. So what we'll do is we'll do direct substitution. So from the left, I'm going to be coming towards x minus one, because it says when x is less than zero. So I do direct substitution and I get negative one. From the right, I'll be using x squared because it's x is greater than or equal to zero. So I sub that in and I get zero squared, which is zero. So now the big question is, is does the limit as x approaches zero of g at x exist? What's happening here? Well, from the left, I get negative one. From the right, I get zero. So since the limit is going from the left and to the right to different values, I'm going to say the limit of the whole thing put together of x approaches zero does not exist, okay? Now, how do we draw this thing? Well, all I'm gonna do is, let's go back to green here, is I'm gonna look at it piece by piece. So the first one says x minus one, so a linear function when x is less than zero. So that's just a nice linear from grade 10. So I'm gonna say, okay, my y-intercept would be at negative one and my slope would be positive one but it only exists to the left of zero when X is less than zero. So I'm just gonna down one left one, down one left one. There's what that function looks like to the left when I'm less than zero. To the right of zero, it says, or including zero, so I'm gonna sub in zero. I get zero squared is zero. Then I'm just gonna keep subbing in X values. When X is one, I get Y is one. When x is two, I get y is four. When x is three, I get y is nine. And there is the second half of my graph. So this is a piecewise function. And you can clearly see it's discontinuous because the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. You need to be good at drawing piecewise functions. Okay, friends, there is one-sided limits. I hope that helped.